So one of our players asked a really interesting question recently. He said, is the deep game, that it factor that so many people are always talking about? We hear coaches talk about this all the time. We hear the media talk about it. You've probably come across people in your own life who have this unmistakable quality about them that you can't put it into words, you can't put your finger on it, but you know it when you see it. And it's just uh, what you might call it, right? We see players uh, in basketball who step on the floor with this certain swagger and naturalness and effortless effortlessness about their game and it's not any one particular skill that they have their skills may be great but it's that's not quite it it's just them right they have that 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 thing that um you again you can't quite explain but you know it when you see it and we also see this maybe like in your social life, right? Where somebody walks into a room and even before they walk in, you can just feel their presence. They have this bigger, uh, more expansive presence in the room and it, it kind of draws all eyes to them. Again, it's that unmistakable quality that you, you, can, you can just feel, right? So <laughs> to answer this question, we actually have to finally give a definition to what it is actually is. And the reason that people call it it, this it factor, is because nobody has put a definition to it. And it actually has a really simple definition. So when I was thinking about how I wanted to describe this and define it, um, I thought back to this really funny um, old clip on YouTube. It was from a 2005 interview on Oprah between Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley. And so Oprah is interviewing MJ and uh, partway through Charles gets called out and he's like decked head to toe in Jordan gear, which is hilarious. Everybody's laughing. Um, MJ and Charles back then were really close friends. And so they go on to tell all of these personal stories about one another. And you can tell they're like really, really close. They really love each other at this time. And at a certain point, uh, Oprah turns to Charles and she says, like, what is it about Michael that people just lose their minds over? Why are people going so crazy over Michael? And she said, there's lots of incredible athletes. Of course, Michael is like <laughs> among the best of the best, but there are a lot of incredible athletes that people don't have the same sort of visceral reaction to. And <laughs> Charles, um, he told this really funny story about how when Michael was playing baseball, Charles comes out to visit him. And they go out maybe to some bar or something and they start shooting pool. And before long, the pool table gets roped off. There's this barrier around the table and a hundred people are standing around staring at Michael playing pool. And these aren't just people who are casually walking by, who uh, look at MJ and say, oh, wow, that's Michael Jordan. Keep on walking. No, these people stopped and stared for hours, for hours. And Charles was like, he's not playing basketball. He's not even doing what he's good at. Like, why? These people must be crazy. Why are they watching him like this? And he stopped to think about it. And he, he said, you know, Michael just has what I call it, it. And that's that it thing again. And as soon as he said it, Oprah and everybody in the crowd were like, yes, that's what he has. He has it. And um, it's funny because when we look at MJ, again, like Oprah said, he, yes, he's an incredibly talented, like one of the greatest of all time. Um, well, I would consider the greatest basketball player of all time, but speaking talent wise and skill wise, um, there are players that you could argue were beyond Michael, maybe. And um, that argument's made all the time. I'm not gonna chime in on that right now. But what Oprah was saying is that it's this quality that he has. Again, it's, it seems to be separate from his skills. It's transcended basketball. And so what this quality actually is, what it actually is, all right, is unrestricted self-expression. Unrestricted self-expression, okay? And I'm going to explain what that means. The first distinction that we have to make when we're talking about unrestricted self-expression, because when I say that, you might think, well, unrestricted self-expression, doesn't that mean you're just like... Uh, saying every last thing that comes to mind and running around screaming and yelling at people and like expressing yourself completely uncontrollably. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. When I say unrestricted self-expression, you might look at this as self with a capital S, <laughs> all right? Not self with a lowercase s, which might represent, um, your random emotions that come up throughout the day, every last thought that comes through your mind, good and bad, uh, all of your, uh, little 
egoic desires and cravings and aversions and these little impulses that come through your mind. No, 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 no. This is the lower self that we're talking about. Self with a capital S, uh, to keep this really simple, because this could go very deep and I don't want to go uh, off track here. To keep it very simple, self with a capital S is the essence of who and what you are in the world. You're completely natural, the core of your person, your being, your personality, okay? When you see Michael uh, play basketball, it is very clear that he is not holding himself back in any way whatsoever. There is no, there are no like mental breaks, right? Oh, so many players um, in basketball, you know, we've all experienced this where we're caught in our head, we're holding ourselves back, we're nervous, we're hesitating, we're thinking about what somebody else might be thinking about us and so on and so forth. There's none of that in Michael, okay? None. <laughs> like, pedal is to the floor. In, uh, we see this as well, and I, I'll go a little bit deeper on that. When Michael came into the league, his game was unlike anybody else before him. Yes, he learned different things from different people, but the expression of his game was completely and totally unique and natural to him. He'd never been seen before. Like people, that's why everybody's jaw was on the floor for uh, over a decade because they were like, how, where did this come from? Never seen anything like it. You know, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, the players before him, they were all in awe. Their, Larry Bird had that famous quote after a game where I think it was the game Michael had like 63 or 64 in Boston in the playoffs. And Larry was like, that's not a man. Like that is God disguised as a basketball player, <laughs> right? And so Michael was not only like completely unrestricted, but he was expressing his, um, the essence of who and what he was as a basketball player, expressing it in an unrestricted way. It was this complete steady stream, this unbroken stream of capital S self-expression when he stepped on the basketball court. That is mesmerizing, okay? There's nothing holding it back. It's like the spirit is moving through him. And in addition to that, Michael, if you watch him in interviews, if you watch him uh, joking around behind the scenes, like in The Last Dance, for example, you see his self-expression is unrestricted. He's not um, restricting and holding himself back. He is completely centered in who and what he is, the essence of himself. And again, that is mesmerizing to see. When, well, to make this a little bit clearer, maybe think to one of your friends who, or, or somebody in your school or somebody that you've come across, doesn't matter who they are, uh, could be an adult, could be, you know, somebody your age, whatever. And whoever has some of that it factor, right? And, and it is like an infinite scale. You can have more of it, you can have less of it, you can have it in like certain situations and not in others. So what is, uh, think back to that person, okay? Are they in like social situations? Are they restricting and second guessing themselves? Are they really, really shy and kind of timid and nervous? No, they're expressing the natural personality of who and what they are. That doesn't mean they fly off the handle and say every last thing in their mind. That doesn't mean that they just spew their emotional charge on everybody when it comes up. They're not um, unhinged, right? It's an expression of their capital S self, the essence of who and what they are. And it's, again, it like the, the term that comes to mind, it's like the spirit moves through them, right? It's naturalness in its purest form. And this is what that it factor is. This is why we're so magnetically drawn to them. And if you look at this from an energetic standpoint, what it really is, is the natural energy of their personality is being expressed in this unbroken stream outwards and it draws everybody else around them into it, right? It, this is like the, the core of the law of magnetism, which states that the game comes to the player who does not try to pull the game towards himself. Like you're just expressing outwards. Your focus, your consciousness, your awareness is not collapsing in on itself. It's just being expressed outwards, unrestricted. Okay, unbroken stream. What most of us do when we're finding ourselves on the basketball court in a personal social situation, anything like that, um, what we find ourselves doing is maybe second guessing the things that we're saying. Again, restriction on the self. What we, uh, when we're on the court, second guessing or hesitating on the moves that we're making rather than, again, 
unrestricted self capital S expression, the core and essence of who and what you are, your unique style, your personality on the basketball court, the unique swagger that you have to your game that is completely and totally uniquely yours. Most players haven't even discovered that yet because their expression is so restricted. All right. So we see that that it factor, actually, the more of it somebody has, the more unrestricted their capital S self-expression is. I hope this is clear what the distinction between like um, those lower impulses is. I'm not talking again about just, uh, you know, <laughs> completely coming unhinged and saying every last thing in your mind and running around like, no, again, that's not what we're talking about. It's capital S, capital S self. So uh, I think back to like the, this really famous, this, this is actually an amazing interview. Kevin Garnett was on the All the Smoke podcast at a 2020 All-Star Weekend, if I'm not mistaken, in, in Chicago, I think. So he's in this podcast and he's telling these stories about Michael. And the one thing that he keeps doing, he keeps doing this, like hopefully you can see this. He's waving his hand as though to like um, when you're clearing smoke from the air, like going like this. And he was doing that to express like the aura that Michael was putting off. You could feel Michael in the room, even when he wasn't around, you, you could literally feel his aura coming off of him. Again, unrestricted self-expression. The energy is streaming out in an unbroken stream. He's not holding it back. He's not afraid to be as big and as powerful as he really is. This is that aura <laughs> that people talk about. Uh, I have a good friend who, uh, a very close friend who actually trained in the same gym as Kobe when he was, um, he was going to school in California. This is near Orange County where Kobe lived. And uh, in the summertime, Kobe would train at that gym every day. Sometimes they'd play pickup together. Um, he was playing division one basketball. My, my friend was at the time. And so Kobe just killed everybody. <laughs> but like, this is where he got his shots up and, and so on. And my friend said that Kobe, no matter where he was in the gym, like the moment he walked in, he could be at the other far, far corner of the gym. And even if you weren't looking at him, you could just feel it. <laughs> like the moment he walked in, his energy was so big. And so again, unrestricted, he was so fully himself and unafraid to be himself that you could just feel feel it coming out of him. And uh, without even looking, you could just, you just knew he had come into the gym. That's unrestricted self-expression, okay? Even if he's not saying anything, his self is still being expressed. You can feel it. So uh, e even when it's not verbal, there's an expression there. Um, how, how do I want to take this? Uh, I'll say, so uh, in the realm of the deep game, we have a player, uh, one of our college players, put it this way. He said, like, after he went through the deep game program, and this is where we tie it back into the original question of, like, is the deep game that it factor? Well, I I'm going to clarify that right now. So one of our players, he finished the eight-week deep game program uh, pretty much as soon as it came out. He was part of the beta group. And this is a player who's been with us for a long, long time, has done uh, pretty much every skill training program that I'd ever produced over the past 10 years. Um, done a lot of really, really hard work on his game, had reached college basketball. And he said, uh, after particularly after going through the deep game program, those eight weeks, he felt like he had this, this different aura around him that was kind of unexplainable. And he said, it sounds weird to say like what, I, I've never really felt this before, but there's this different aura coming off of me and people are noticing me differently. Like, what is that? Um, another one of our players, same thing, uh, made it to college basketball. Unfortunately, he got hurt uh, and is rehabbing a back injury right now. But the way he put it, he said, it's it's kind of like this light that shines off of people. And you you feel that starting to happen in, in the deep game. And I thought like, is deep game that it factor? Well, no, deep game itself is not that it factor, of course. Deep game is engineered and structured in such a way, it's a framework to allow your capital S self to come through in a more unrestricted way, okay? When you follow the, the eight laws of the deep game, the law of presence all the way through to the law of, uh, of transcendence, when you follow these eight laws, it provides this framework for yourself to be naturally expressed. You're basically, um, you know, 
your your foot can be on the gas and and it stops hitting the brakes so much you stop hesitating you stop getting caught up in your thoughts and your emotions um, you stop getting weighed down by all of this um, mental emotional psychological baggage you release that and it's again like the brakes come off or the, the chains get broken and more of yourself more and more of yourself continues to shine through the more that you do these practices the more that you do this work okay so the deep game is a framework through which capital s self comes through in an unrestricted way that's what it really is it's not the it factor um, in and of itself but it is a framework for cultivating and expressing more of that so to wrap this up um, i, I want to go now into essentially what the enemy of this it factor is what is the enemy of this it factor the one thing that that it factor your unrestricted self-expression the enemy of that is in fact perfectionism <laughs> it's perfectionism and this is a problem that so many players have that i've struggled with many many times in my life uh, to various degrees that um, you know we all struggle with to some degree and what you realize, so think about like what you're really doing. If you're trying to hold yourself as this perfect ideal, right? There is a constant self-judgment that's happening. There's a constant self-judgment. Every word that you say has, if every word that you say has to be perfect in a conversation, then you're constantly going to be restricting the words that are coming out of your mouth and judging them and second guessing them for what they are, rather than allowing capital S self to be expressed in your unique and natural personality. You're not allowing all of yourself to come through because you're restricting and second guessing and judging it. This is what perfectionism does. If you try to play the perfect game on the basketball court, which nobody has ever done, right? If, you want, if you're so caught up mentally in playing this perfect game, what are you gonna do? Well, you're going to try to make every move the perfect move. You're gonna be, again, restricting, second guessing, judging every single move that you make. And as we know, uh, basketball happens way too fast. It's a game of spontaneity. It has to happen naturally and of itself, okay? That is when that it factor comes through. It's when you are not restricting yourself in any way. And it's, it's, a, it's a skill to learn to do this skillfully. And once again, I can't say this strongly enough to make no misunderstanding here. This does not mean <laughs> saying every last thing that comes to your mind, uh, putting on like uh, expressing your emotional charge to anybody in the area. No, no, no. Again, capital S, the essence of your natural personality. And if I say this and it, it's like it raises the question of what exactly is that? The reason we have to ask that question in the first place is because we are so restricted that we've never actually found who and what we naturally are. We've never settled into that like, um, you know, in simple terms, like being so comfortable in our own skin that there's no reason to second guess yourself or hesitate. You just are you and you are unmistakably and unapologetically yourself. Um, a player that comes to mind in the NBA who I, I would say has it um, more so than most players is Damian Lillard. Okay. When you look at Damian Lillard, is he just running his, his mouth and expressing every last thing that comes to it? No, he's like the opposite of that. And yet he is so himself unapologetically and uh, like unmistakably, everybody that looks at him, you can tell there's that just that natural, his natural personality shines through. You can feel it. You can feel it. And that is that it factor. He's not restricting it. He is just so completely and totally himself. All right. So I'll, uh, I'll end off with a, an interesting little story and this, this might get a little bit more esoteric, but it's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> it's kind of weird actually. So there's a forest near my house that I walk through almost every day. And it's this 45 minute beautiful trail through uh, like this forest full of trees, like oak trees and maple trees. And um, you know, if you walk through the forest, Every single tree in that forest is different and unique, and you don't look at the trees thinking, um, you know, that tree's wrong, that tree's right, that tree's too tall, that tree's too short. You're not judging any of them. They are just perfect. Each tree is perfectly and naturally itself, right? 
Well, I come upon this tree every day that is unlike any other tree I've ever seen. And it's actually like hard to believe I, saying this. I'm like, how is this even possible? But somehow <laughs> this tree has grown as most trees do straight up. And then it went, grew back down towards the earth and then <laughs> changed direction again and grew straight up. So it's a squiggly tree. How this happened, I have no idea. Did it get struck by lightning? Did, was the like light coming through the trees in such a way that it had to grow in the opposite direction? Temper like I have no idea. <laughs> and looking at this the first time I saw it, I was like, "What? How? Th this is just such a feat of nature that um, I don't know how to explain it." You know, that is that it factor. It's just expressing itself in this completely unique way. And what we find is that nature itself, there's no. Um, Nature itself is totally and completely perfect. When you walk through a trail, you're not looking at um, the trees and judging them. You're not looking at the birds in the sky and you know the, there's snakes on the trail now. So you're not looking at these snakes like crawling by and, or, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know, what did do snakes crawl? They're crawling by and uh, thinking like, oh, what's that snake doing? Like, stop crawling that way. Why are you, why are you so squiggly? Like, no, like <laughs> that, that's not what we do. And yet as human beings, we're constantly putting that form of judgment on ourself. And yet um, we are so completely and totally in, <sighs> A part of nature itself. We are an expression of nature in the same way that the tree that grows up and down, the squiggly tree, is, ex is an expression of nature, so are we. And so that perfectionism is completely and totally a figment of the human imagination. All right. It's a figment of the human imagination. It's something that we made up. Perfect means different things to different people. One person's idea of perfect could be the complete opposite of somebody else's. And so perfection is something that you decided um, you wanted your ideal to be. It's this thing that you want to live up to. And once again, it is simply a figment of your imagination. It doesn't exist in reality. In nature, all is perfection. <laughs> Everything is perfection from the squiggly tree to like the giant solid oak tree. It's all a perfect expression of nature. And when you come back into contact, there's a, a really beautiful way of putting this from one of my favorite philosophers, Alan Watts. Alan Watts puts it this way. He says, when you look at the clouds in the sky, is there any such thing as a misshapen cloud? No, is there any such thing as a like misshapen wave in the in the ocean when waves roll in? Are any of those waves wrong or imperfect? No, they are like each one is a perfect manifestation and an expression of nature. And when you come to regard yourself in this way as a perfect expression of nature, that is when that it quality comes through that um, you stop restricting yourself and that capital S self starts to come through the essence of who and what you are the essence in the same way as that squiggly tree is expressing it your itself you know squiggles and all you begin to express yourself in this perfect way that you're not restricting you're not placing all these judgments on yourself you're just letting yourself shine through and that is a big big part of the work that we do in deep game especially in law number five and the, the identity work that we do my goal with this work is not to change you into anything. It's not to fix you in any way. It's not to uh, convince you to be anything in particular at all, except for what you truly and naturally are, right? It's to not to change what you are, but to help more of what you truly are come to the surface and shine through, okay? And the question comes up from players like, okay, well, if, if I am a perfect expression of nature in and of myself, then what is the point to working on myself at all, to growing, to doing skill work, to, um, to training? Like, why are we even doing this then? Why don't I just sit on the couch and eat Doritos and play Xbox and whatever? <laughs> well, <laughs> in the same way that the tree grows towards the sun, the flowers in the, in the, forests grow towards the sun, they grow as a natural expression of nature. It is in our nature to grow, to grow. Nothing in nature, everything in nature that isn't growing is dying, right? We hear that expression a lot to the point where it's become a cliche, but if we look in nature, that becomes very, 
very clearly true. If we look at humans, like, <laughs> you know, we go through this very clear cycle where we grow and evolve and develop and then we are dying. Our cells are dying off and, and our body eventually dies. And so, um, not to get like morbid here, but <laughs> that, that is what nature is constantly doing. And so it is in our nature to grow. It's in our nature to evolve. It is in our nature to change and develop and discover more and more of that unique perfection, that unique self-expression that each of us has. And that unique self-expression is, make no mistake, completely and totally unique to you. You'll find a really good example in like comedy. Um, if the comedian is up on stage and you can tell that he's trying to contrive something he's trying to like copy somebody else's style or joke or um he's like really planning things out in his mind in any way if he's trying to contrive anything the joke falls flat it's not funny regardless of the words that are combined together if the expression of it isn't there it's not funny and so comedy is this really interesting study in that it factor because it has to be spontaneous. It has to happen naturally, right? Unrestricted, capital S, self-expression. That's the only way that those jokes land. That's the only way that comedy, true comedy happens. Dave Chappelle, uh, personally my favorite comedian, like that guy is just dripping with it factor, right? He's dripping with it. And uh, so we, we see that this, this happens uh, not only in basketball, but in really every aspect of life. Certain people have it. They're not restricting themselves. The natural essence of their personality is coming through. And then we see others who are restricting themselves. And maybe they have it in certain situations even, but in others they don't. And my goal with this deep game work is not only to help you bring out more of yourself on the basketball court and stop restricting yourself so that your natural unique personality can shine through on the basketball court, but also off the court. It, it bleeds into every aspect of life so that you feel completely at home in the world wherever you are. Everywhere that you go, like you are at home within yourself. And it's just such a beautiful feeling and such a beautiful way of being in the world. So uh, just some thoughts on this question. Is the deep game that it factor that everybody talks about? No, it's a framework for allowing that it factor, in other words, your natural unrestricted self-expression to come through. Okay, so I hope that helps you out. And uh, I will, right before I end this off, actually, one final thought for you. Uh, <laughs> somebody a little bit famous in our, in our deep game uh, community, uh, somebody that we look up to, and um, he's a mythologist named Joseph Campbell. Okay, and Joseph Campbell puts this in a really beautiful way. He says, the privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. The privilege of a lifetime is being who you are. Not somebody else's copy, not uh, the attempt at being anything other than what you are, but the true essence of who and what you are in the world. When that comes through, that is the privilege of a lifetime. And that is my wish for you. All right. So once again, I hope this helped you out and I will see you in the next one. Hey, it's Coach Taylor. I hope you enjoyed today's talk. And if you did, the best thing to do right now while it's fresh in your mind is go to deepgame.com or click the link in the description and it'll take you to our free Deep Game Masterclass where you'll actually learn the entire Deep Game of Basketball with all eight laws and all of the fundamentals that you need to know as a high-level basketball player. We've had players call this the best hour of basketball learning of their lives and it's completely free. So go to deepgame.com right now or just click the link in the description and I can't wait to see you there.